Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and I'm here with a little project today, and I'm quite excited about the project. Gel plate in hand, this is my 5x7, so guess what, we're working on the gel plate today. So, let's just give you a bit of a background here. I belong to a Facebook group called um, Makers of Mixed Art, Mi let's start that one again, Makers of Mixed Media Art and Artists. I always get the name wrong, so I've written it down and still I cannot read it. And it's run and maintained by these lovely people, which is Patricia and Mariah of PM Artist Studio, who are actually carrying now... Um, my own line of designer stencils and masks. Very happy about that. Thank you very much for the trust, ladies. I'm having fun with it. So within that group, and it's a lovely supportive group full of artists and creative people who support and encourage each other along the way. And each month they do several like challenges or competitions or swaps or things like that. And I wanted to join in this month purely because I have a little more time, believe it or not, this month. And there's a tag swap. So let's move that to one side just so that I've kind of got a space. Um, actually, I probably don't need the space over there, do I? I'm going to be working directly on that. Okay, let's put it back in the middle. So this is a 5x7 gel press plate. Um, over to one side, I've got my roll-off pad. And any of you who are following me know that I'm working on roll-off sheets that I'm going to brayer off onto, and then they're going to become a journal. Um, I'm using my speedball brayer. It's my favorite brayer. I've got umpteen brayers with me, though. So we'll be jumping back and forth. I also have my trusty folio full of um, stencils and masks. And I'm going to try and use more PM Artist Studio ones in this video because I've got a little treat at the end for you um, that I can share something with you that maybe you'd like to take advantage of. So anyway, what is this challenge I'm drawing on about? Um, this month on the challenge they're doing a tag swap and by tag they just mean these now I've cut mine out of card I've cut I think it was six of them Did I cut six two I can't count today one two three four five so I've cut eight there you go so I have eight tags I only need two tags for the challenge but I like to give myself options so I'm going to use my gel plate and I'm going to paint up these and then the two that I select, I might finish them off a little bit more, I'm not sure. I think I'm probably just going to stick with using gel plate detail on it. And then those two will get sent off to um, someone in the States who's my partner we're swapping with. And then she will send some back to me. So, and then the others, I don't know, I might send them to someone else. So that's what the thing is, that's what this is all about. Now, um, the names were all put into a hat per se. Um, and the person I pulled out or was pulled out for me is called Tammy. Now, I'm not going to give you Tammy's last name um, and I'm not going to give you any details about her personal life because that would be unfair of me to do that. I don't have her permission to do that, although I'm sure she wouldn't object. But I would like to just keep keep within the reins of not upsetting anyone. Tammy, when you watch this, if you choose to write part of your story or your history or who you are, where you are, wherever you th you think you want to do into the comments, by all means, that's completely fine. But I do think it's your right to say and not mine. So as most of us know, one of my favorite colors is this buttermilk color. So I'm just gonna come in now. I'm gonna be um, working directly onto my gel plate, which a lot of you know, I don't normally do. I normally use my five by seven as my palette and then I put it onto my bigger plate. Today I've decided just to be brave and work straight on here and I'm going to put backgrounds and I'm going to put them in sections. I'm not covering the whole the whole tag. I just want sections of colour to build up. Um, I don't want to say a geometric design, but a design that actually is a little bit blockish or blocky, should I say. Right. So I'm just going to come in and line these up. And I'm going to put down as many as I can, as quickly as I can, because believe it or not, even though it's autumn, it's a warm day here. And I don't want my paint drying off on me. So this is quite a quick way just to build up design. Actually, I might make that one complete. Just to build up design. Let's grab a bit of tissue paper, just so I can give it a bit of a rub. Now, I am trying to keep the back of the tags 
actually as clean as I can keep them. But to be honest with you, I'm going to read back them anyway when they're done because although they're a nice cardstock, I think they need to be a little more robust than they're going to be. But we'll wait till I finish to do all of that. And I'm probably not going to do that on screen anyway. So lift this off. Oh, my whole gel plate came off. There you go. So as you can see, picked up a little bit of grunge from previous. That's actually okay with me. Why is it lifting off my plate? It doesn't normally do that. So as you can see, it is quite, quite a flat looking background. I'm wondering why my plate isn't sticking down. It should be sticking down. Right, so come in and lift just a couple of those lines off. They don't come off, doesn't bother me. Right, so that's my first layer on there. Um, I want to change to another colour. I'm going to stick with sort of, I don't want to say bland colours because they're not bland, neutrals. That's a better way to put it. So I'm just going to use this colour called Camel, which is a colour I've not really used a lot in the past, but I discovered it the other day on one of my videos and I went, you know, I quite like that. It's almost like a really subtle coffee dyed or tea dyed paper colour. So I'm just going to come in and again lift off sections, give myself pieces of interest. So anyway, <clears throat> um, as I was saying, my swap partner is called Tammy. Tammy lives in America. Um, is it Georgia? I think it might be Georgia. Without looking at the address, I can't actually tell you, but I think it was Georgia that um, Tammy is from. <clears throat> I don't know a lot about Tammy, but Tammy was kind enough to give me a little bit of her background, which which is very intriguing and lovely. And the lady's a strong lady, let's put it that way. Tammy has been through some stuff and come out the other side, a very strong woman, um, by the sounds of it, very adaptable, which, which is, you know what? If something doesn't work the way it's supposed to work, you find a way to make it work. And and Tammy has done exactly that. Um, and that's brilliant. And I think that's actually personally one of my secrets as to... Let's put a bit of this matte colour on this. I think it's called Rose. Antique Pink Rose. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why I've survived through, well, losing my business and and stuff like that through the COVID series, um, the virus taking over and I, I've adapted the way I work. I've adapted my approach to things. I'm, I'm a great believer in that if you're constantly learning and constantly changing, um, you're, you're interesting, you, you're developing stuff in yourself and discovering stuff about yourself which I think is wonderful and I've constantly adapted uh, so much so that this week when I get time um, I need to go on to my website and actually do some work on my website just to update it a bit because I created a new website a while ago and guess what I've done nothing with it since so I'm gonna pop that one in there so if I just rescue that little bit of something um, yeah, let's just pop it on there. So as you can see, all I'm doing is almost patchwork quilting, but with paints and tags. And as you can see also, my hope of keeping the backs of the tags clean has failed. Yeah, that's right. I've got fingerprints on them already, but you know, that's just, that's the way it is. It's art. So, so see, I'm just getting some really interesting bits now. I'm looking, as I said, to cover the backgrounds completely. Like that one, that one can go up to rest. That one can go up to rest. There will definitely be more on them. I think I covered up the biscuit piece I put in the first place. So I'm going to keep on going until I've got it all um, covered and then I'm going to work differently. Now I don't want those marks on there. So I'm just taking a damp cloth and working to clear those off. Right, I'm liking what I've got colour-wise so far, but I'd like to introduce, for me, a bit of green. So let's have a little look. What have I got? I've got a sap green, which is quite pungent, if I seem to remember right. Oh, I've got this lovely green here. 
Maybe I'll use some of that. Maybe it's never too early to add a little bit of shimmer. Um, so anyway, uh, from what I can tell of Tammy, as I said, strong woman, adaptable. Um, from what I know, a wonderful, wonderful lady. And, and I can't go into it any more detail than that because it's not my place to do so. But I thought my vision of Tammy was someone who's obviously creative because she's part of that community that I'm part of. Um, somebody who adapts her way of living um, throughout her life, which I think is very exciting. And I love the fact that, Tammy, you found a way forward and I love you for that. I really do. Um, so basically, I can't really say any more than that, but just know that thumbs up, Tammy, you're making it work. And I love that. I think I want to leave that there. I might come in and just pull a little bit off there. I don't mind. Oh, that's an interesting bit. I don't mind if it's not all square edges. That's not, not the aim of this. The aim of this is just to um, create an artistic background. So I don't mind pieces of other colour because you will find later on. I'm going to do that anyway. I'm going to come in and do what I call a kissing technique, which means is I just add patches of colour as we go along. I'm loving that so far. Right, so let's lift these off. See, really getting some nice stuff happening here. So um, I could have, and I did consider, actually coming in and doing a whole 12 by 12 and then just cutting it up. Um, however, I thought they may all look very, very samey and I didn't want that. I wanted to add some variety into it. I wanted to juggle around the designs a bit. So right, looking at what we've got, we've got greens, neutrals, pinks, green and whites. Now I'm not worried that um, I might put paint over an area like that because if I use a transparent I will still see that through that. So I've got some whole ones as I call them and all of these, that one doesn't need any more work at the moment, that I can get away with not working on. So I've got four that I just want to pull something more into and I think it's time I added a blue or a turquoise. As you heard me say I want to make these bright and vibrant. I want them to reflect the image I have of Tammy and I know Tammy is celebrating um, in the month of October um, something that's not a birthday but it's it's a very big celebration for her and I want to capture something that's going to look like a celeb celebration. So I'm just going to come down. This time I'm just going to dab them on and lift them off. Don't mind going in angles. Angles is okay. I know you don't see me do that too often because I'm usually a straight line type of guy. But I'm okay with angles today. I don't know why, but I just am. Today works for me. Right, I think I'd like a little bit on here. See, don't mind that, that whole painty wall type of effect. Just tap that down a little bit in there. This could do with a little bit more on it. Um, have I got any blue on those? No, but that little square there might be interesting. There you go. So I've just got stuff. Let's clean this off. Well, not clean off totally, but actually just brayer it down a bit just to go onto my brayer mat. Okay, so now I've got some bases here. I've got a couple of white areas still. But as I said, I'm going to use possibly a transparent on them. And I think I'm going to do that now. So I think I might use a yellow. I've got a transparent yellow here. Now it's quite a pungent yellow. And I'm putting it onto an area that's got some of the previous colour on it. So it's not going to be as vibrant. And that's actually okay. It's sort of a greenish colour that was on here anyway. So I'm hoping that that'll add... A layer of interest. So I'm going to come in, touch it down, lift it off. See what I mean? It's just because it's transparent paint, it means I'm not covering up what's underneath. I'm possibly intensifying some of the green that's already on there and adding interest upon interest upon interest. 
So let's give this little one a touch as well. And I think I want a bit more in there just to break that up and that. Okay, I'm getting there with these. I'm loving that so far. I'm gonna try and get that little bit of white out of there. I'm not overly bothered by the white, but for some reason, I, I'm just in the habit of making sure that the whole of the background is taken out of the design. I think we're doing okay. Right, let me just clean this mat off a bit. See if I lift it up with some tissue. Probably won't get it all off, but I can just lift it off. And then that gives me something to give it a wipe with. And I'm not wasting paint because um, my tissue papers get used for doing collage. That off there would help. So, right, before I go to the next stage, let's have a look at where we're at. So, quite liking that. I'm liking the colour combination of that. It's not a colour combination I normally use, but I quite like that. That's another one. I'm going to start working, I think, in a moment with some textures on these. Um, colours, I'm just going purely... I quite like that colour, actually. Um, I'm going purely by gut instinct here. Now, some of them, like that, for instance, I immediately know I want to lighten that up with something. This again, I'd like to almost give it a frosted cover, covering. Okay, right. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some white, right? Just regular white. That's got a nice bit of a thing on the end of it. That needs to go. So it doesn't get stuck anywhere. Right, I want a really thin coating of white. Am I still in shot? I am still in shot, good. Um, and I'm going to do that kissing technique I told you about. And for me, that just means I let the paper or the card or whatever I'm printing onto, I let it just fall onto the um, gel plate and pick up what it wants. So just come in and just literally do that. See, and it gives that sort of frosted, almost old painted wall look, which I love so much. A little bit more up there. Um, just go through. Now, I know that I'm using the same colors for each of the tags. I'm using slightly different places on the tags when I'm creating, but you know what? They will all then be unified by a similar look. And yeah, I got more paint on the back of that. So, and that, I like that. I'm enjoying the fact that um, they'll have a unifying core to them, but then they'll each be individually different on their own. So just spray that down a bit. A bit more onto my roll off. Right, looking at all of these, I want one more color in there. And I think I want it to be this. Um, this is Wild Orchid um, by Docraft or Docraft. Um, it's a recent acquisition for me, this colour, and I'm still exploring whether I like it or not. Um, it's got a punch, but as I said, I want these, these tags to be vibrant. I want them to be full of life, full of colour. Um, I was tempted to actually contact Tammy and ask her, what are your favourite colours? And then I thought, no, because that that then dictates what I would do. It would also limit what I do as well. I'm going to come in and touch some of these down. Just smack it down on the thing and see what it picks up. I'm liking that. Okay, I do that on all of them. Um, so yes, I didn't I didn't really want to um, ask Tammy for that detail because I I don't know, maybe it's a nice surprise that. I will be creating something Tammy hadn't actually thought of that colour combination. So, now I've got to be careful because this time of year, of course, purple, green, yellow, black is all going to shout um, Halloween, unless I'm very careful. So I'm going to be using colours, but I'm just going to be a bit cautious because obviously colours for... Everybody read in a different way. I mean, colours are very significant. I mean, as, as a cake decorator and designer, I was always very cautious of 
using certain colours um, because culturally they mean different things to different people. So um, I think first of all I'm going to do what most of you are probably going to go, he's going to add bubble wrap. Yes I'm going to add bubble wrap. And I'm going to use this one because bless it is beaten to death by now. So I'm going to line these up four at a time and I'm just going to come in and do a bit bit of mass bubble make, wrap making just with some white just to add something again conscious don't want this to be too busy I don't want it to be too dark so just a little bit of white on my palette or on my gel plate just enough just to give me something I can pick up with just put it down give it a bit of a wiggle stamp it down again a little bit of a wiggle stamp it down as you can see I'm not picking up a lot and that's intentional and that was because I don't want the bubble wrap design to be dominant so I didn't put a lot on my plate to start with so there you go so we've got those which I might use that one just to pick up some off there so those ones are done now what I might do is where's that I'm going to bring in the buttercream for the next one doing exactly the same thing with exactly the same bit of bubble wrap but doing it on the other four so we're varying slightly now I'm just pulling away from them being completely uniform which they were never going to be completely uniform in the first place but you know what I mean you hear what I'm saying I know you do so let's just bring in Mr Bubble Wrap I don't know why he's a mister he just is, probably because he's messy. And this one to just have a little bit more. Let's move you out of the way. Okay, right, that's enough bubble wrap. I don't want to get hung up on the bubble wrap thing. But see, we're getting really contemporary look to these now. Let's take that out of the way. So that needs a bit of a clean up, so just come in with this tissue. Um, the tissue I'm using, by the way, is Carnival tissue paper. It's manufactured here in the UK. It can be expensive if you're shipping abroad, because of course paper weighs a lot and tissue weighs quite a considerable amount. Um, so if you're going to order it internationally, um, I'd say buy a bigger bundle of it and maybe split the cost with another person you know that would use it in your area. Um, if not, you could use gift wrap. I use this because it's water resistant or it's accepting of water and it doesn't break down as quickly. So here we're at, we're at these. And I think now I need to start thinking of adding stuff that is a little more formal to these, as in using some stenciling now just to I'm liking that one. I'm liking all of them, but that one just speaks to me. Right, I think I want to bring in the stencil book and let's have a little a little bit of a look. And as I said, I'm going to try and work with predominantly um, PM Artist Studios today, because studio, not studios, um, purely because um, that's what I want to do. I want this one. I like I like the geometrics of this. This is Dragonfly stained glass, it's an eight by ten. I believe it comes in other sizes as well. Don't want those at the moment. Don't want those. Mm, I think I want one of these. Right, this is quilted crop circles. And um, let's use the middle size, which is this size. How many are in this? It's a set of four and a tidbit. A tidbit is that bit there. Daisies, don't want daisies. I use cellular membrane a lot. Don't need an eye. Maybe I'll use this. This only arrived last week and I don't know whether it's got a name or whether it's something they're playing with, but I quite like that. Let's grab that. I use it all the time. Why don't I use it this time then? Let's pull it out. Doesn't mean I've got to use it. It's geometric Polynesian. There's one more I'm looking for and I can't find it. Where have you gone? There you are, Mr. Wonky Net. I like Wonky Net. 
I use wonky net a lot. Right, we've probably not got enough stencils or we might have far too many stencils. So I'm just going to start thinking now, right, I've got a lot of stuff going on. I now want to work bigger pattern to smaller pattern. So when I say that, I mean like, this this is quite a large pattern and will cover quite a large area but then the things that go on it would be smaller and smaller and smaller all the way down to that sort of size so that's that's where my thinking is going so i'm going to start with this one okay so i'm just going to come on and load up my plate um, i'm putting just a little bit more than i would normally put on my plate because i'm going to lay the stencil or the mask over the top and then press the card, uh, the tags down through it. So I need enough for it to be able to lift off the design. I quite like that area there. Let's pop that down. So we're talking this sort of area. So like for instance, this one is quite dark. So if I come in and just press down in that area, I'm not pressing the whole tag because see, I want to lift those sort of areas off there. See, it's just giving me pieces, which is exactly what I want. Now, it doesn't mean that every single tag is gonna have this on. It's gonna have as much as I've got on this plate. I like that sweep, that sweep's interesting to me. And this one I wanted to cover that little bit there. There you go. Right, let's put those to one side. Now what I want to do now, let's put those over there, <clears throat> is I'm going to come in with some tissue and just lift that out of there. And then what that will do, it will leave behind um, the white that's underneath this. I'm wondering actually whether I want to put a colour into it and then lift it off. Am I still in shot? I'm still in shot. Right, so I now know that I've got white underneath this. <clears throat> I'm thinking whether I want to actually put something in here that's got a punch of drama into it, like over the top and then lift it off so it has lines on it. I don't know, there you go, permanent magenta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of this on here. Not a huge amount, just a bit. And I'm going to brayer it down into all the crevices. Now what this is going to do is the paint is going to gather in the edges. And then when I lift them off, lift the colour out of this again, what will happen is it will leave behind an outline, hopefully, for the white pieces I put in there. It might be warming up for a new piece of tissue paper shortly. This one, I know it's water resistant, but the amount of paint I'm adding to it, it may end up as more than water resistant. It may just fall to pieces. Now, of course, I could have used my tags to lift this paint up with instead of the tissue. But to be honest with you, the tissue is looking really fabulous. And as I said, I do use them um, for... What's the word I'm thinking of? For collage, right? So if I lift this off, I'm going to move reasonably quickly at this point because underneath is going to be paint I don't want to dry. See, that's wonderful. So I'm just going to lay, lay my pieces on here. Just to give me as much interest as I can. I'm going to get as many tags on here as possible just to unify my designs. So carrying the theme through. Now, I did say in the beginning that I only need two tags. So I don't really need to worry about this. I think I'm going to grab a new piece of tissue. Well, another piece of tissue. Um, I'm not going to worry that all tags are identical. It doesn't matter that they are. This also now needs to go in a bowl of water if you want to clean it off. I don't usually do that. I just let them dry and keep on working with them. The only exception is if a stencil is like this one with lots of little apertures, if you don't close, uh, you don't clean it off, or at least wipe it, eventually those little apertures, especially thin lines like that, will just clog up with um, paint and you'll never see them again. 
<clears throat> right, let's see what we've got. I love the reveal. This is, I love the surprises you get with gel printing and that's one of the reasons I love gel printing. Okay, interesting, liking that. Yep. Like that, that lined up really nicely with the green. That was a complete fluke, guys. That was not intentional. Like that across the top. That's cool. Right, so we've got stuff left on here. I'm just going to put some of these down and see if anything lifts off whatsoever, which I very much doubt it's going to. Very, very much doubt it's going to. No, it's done. Right, so I'm just going to give this a bit of a wipe off. So, right, so let's have a look. So we're doing okay. I do think I want some sort of unifying glaze over the top of these now. So I'm, I'm going to be looking for a transparency that will just be a complete cover over of this and it will translate all of the different colors underneath, not translate, transform all of the colors underneath into another color. Now that could be a metallic. It may not be a metallic. So <clears throat> it's just the layers upon layers upon layers of interest. And then after I've done that, we'll then work with things like um, contrasts within this. So, right, let's have a bit of a think of the transparencies I've got that I really like. Right, time to think here. So I think I'm gonna start by using the yellow. And I only, I, at this point, I'm gonna break away from doing more than one tag at a time. Um, I'm going to, uh, more than doing all of them at the same time. I'm literally coming in to give give a glaze on the individual tags. So I think this one speaks to me that I could use the yellow on it. Let's put that down. On the back. And the twofold reason for the tissue is it will clean my plate and it gives me a chance to press down on the back of these. Now there is something called a baron. A baron is like um, Looks a bit like a hockey puck with a handle, and you can slide it around. I'm guessing the postman's here. That's Biscuit having a moment. Let's take that off. Can you hear him? He's having a good old shout at the postman. It's not because he doesn't like the postman, he loves the postman. So, there you go. See, that really unified it all. So let's put that to one side. So that's the yellow one. Now, I do like this Burnt Sienna by Winsor & Newton. Oh, I like it more if I can open it. I don't know why this one tube sticks all the time. And it does stick all the time. Right. That can go in there. Now, I'm, I'm thinking this one. Mind you, that might work as well. I might do two out of these, I'm not sure. Let's just, let's get one of them down. Actually, I've still got quinacridone burnt orange as well, so. All right, let's put this one down and lift up whatever is down there. <clears throat> now, after this stage, guys, um, I will just be putting a contrast on there. And a contrast will be um, a black, or a white, it'll be quite a solid colour just to really make the design pop. And then these are probably done by then. So where did this one go to? Okay, I quite like that. That changed the character of that one considerably. So it's just, where's that cloth gone? That's that one done. Okay, I'm tempted maybe to leave one or two of these as is as well. So I don't have to do everything right. The burnt orange one. No. Have to be careful because burnt orange is quite a pungent one. I might do it on this one actually. And this is a golden colour. <clears throat> I think my favourite golden transparent is um, 
what is it? It's something iron oxide. I can never remember names of things. I'm absolutely terrible at names. So anyone who knows me is lucky if I even remember what their name is. So just taking more of that off. I don't want it to be too dominant. Just going to put that down. I'm looking at this thinking I might want to just lift a bit off onto the side of that. Just It just appealed to me. I don't, I don't know why. It just appealed to me. A bit like I don't know why I just added a bit there when it's almost exactly the same colour. <clears throat> Ooh, that changed character, didn't it? Right, that's another one. Let's give this a bit of a wipe down. Right, I wanted to use the magenta. Oh, just my lids are sticking today. Maybe I maybe I was in a rush and did them up too tight the last time I was working. The gender goes into that one. There you go. <clears throat> Again, it's a transparent, but even if it is a transparent, you have to make sure you don't have too thick a layer of paint down because even the transparent is going to not be transparent if you add too much to it. I think that's enough of that. That really changed that, loving that. Now I'm thinking I quite like a bit on here. Just I'm just adding things to things here. And I'm looking and I'm wondering whether I might leave one or two of these in this sort of brighter thing, because I like those as they are. Quite like to add something to the bottom of that one, to be honest. Quite like those two as they are. This one I feel needs something. Not sure about that one. I think these two could do with something. The one so far is this yellow one, which maybe I can lift a little bit more of that off onto it. That's cool. We've got this one that's really did turn orange. I like the colours in this one. I like that. Now there's lots of depth in these and that's why I like them. I can look through into them. Oh, just had a thought. It's another stencil I might pull out that I like I like the thought of for finishing techniques off right now I pulled out all the transparencies sees transparencies transparent paints and I want to make a decision on these two now I think the blue is going to be too dark and I think the violet is the wrong one I do now they weren't before but I do now and I'm wondering whether I've got something that's See, I've got ultramarine violet, which is almost a transparent. I think I'm going to use that on these because what it will do is it will intensify the purple that's already on there um, and amp it up a bit. But I'm not sure whether I want it on both of them. So I'm just going to come in and see what effect that has. Oh, that really did work. Right, let's see if I can get another bit off this brayer. Yes, that's what I was looking for. And I don't mind coming in and just lifting some of the odd bits off on here just to add yet another bit of unification of colours on here. So I think now, let's just clean my brayer off, clean this gel plate off. All right, let's move that to one side and have a look at where we've got. So we've got this one really nice and punchy. We've got another one that's really quite nice and punchy. I quite like the way these came through. I think this was the wild orchid or something was the base for that. These are the two we've just done. These are the two I didn't do a glaze over the top of. And this one, which is quite quickly becoming one of my favourites. So we've got those. I think what I want to do now is I want to come in one last time with a really thin layer of white. Is white the right colour? I want a light colour, maybe it's not white. 
it's something really thin. Maybe I do want buttermilk. I just want the odd patch of lightness. And as you can see by the small amount I put down, we are not talking a large amount of anything here. We're just talking a bit of that kissing technique of mine, just to give it something to change the way the intensity of everything looks like up here needs something. And that may just be enough. So it's all about layers for me. It's always been about the layers, about picking pieces up, leaving pieces behind. Um, I think I've actually got a video on one of my playlists called Addition and Subtraction. And to me, it is really all about adding pieces and taking pieces away visually. All right. So we just get that little bit off on this one. Oh, it's getting darker. Maybe it's going to rain. Right, so as you can see, that's just, there are so many, how close can I get? Okay, there are so many layers in there, which is wonderful. Again, you can look into this, oops, there's a bit of gunge on there, into this, is that, there you go. And I, I like, that's what I love about tags. Uh, that's what I like about using the gel print. You can get so much within a tag. There's layers within layers within layers. like this one this is unlike any of the others there and this one's not not the same as anything else either right I think it's now time to start thinking about upper layers and by upper layers I mean the ones that will stand out the contrasting layers which a lot of the time means black for me um, I am looking at these though and thinking is black the right idea and I think it probably is um, where was that other sten stencil I wanted to use? I'll just pull this in. There's a stencil. This is what, with the Asemic the writing. This is a lovely stencil. Mind you, mine's getting really heavy with the amount I use it. So I think on some of these, I'm going to be putting just a small amount of this onto it. Right. Um, upper layers. These, these are the ones I've selected. Now, if I'm going to go size-wise, these two are the bigger, these two are the smaller, and that's the accent piece on top. So I need to just keep that in mind. I think I'm going to do a strip of these in black. Uh, just using some Mars black. Why is it me and paint lids today? Right. I don't want a huge amount of this on here. I don't want it soupy and sliding around. Now, I find here in Wales, the highly pigmented colours are the ones that dry quite quickly. So I'm going to be a little faster than I probably would normally be. But I'm going to put this down the edge like that. And I'm going to come in with some of these and pick up blocks of the squares. Is it going to be perfectly straight? Probably not. See? And if I do a double hit on a square, I know it's going to be lighter every time I do it. See? By there. So I, I don't mind that. Um, let's do it this way on. This one could do with a little bit in here as well. All right, maybe just a bit more on the edge of this one. Okay, I think I'm going to leave these three, or yes, I'm going to leave these three untouched. So that's going to come off. Now I could lay this down on something, but I've got nothing else I'm working on at the moment. So that's going to come off. Let's pull this down to be wiped out. Make sure my brayer is clean for the next colour. There was a lot of paint on that side because 
I didn't think ahead. If I'd have thought ahead, I would have only brayed colour on half my gel plate. But I was too distracted to enjoy myself, wasn't I? Right. Now there is some black still left on here. I do not mind if some of that picks up on the next thing I work on. So you can see I've a really good clean up of this board afterwards. So right, so I've sort of done, I've done black on these. And these three I've left without black. So I think what I want to do is I want to put a different colour onto these to pull these together. And I'm thinking I like the idea of using something that's quite punchy. I don't know why I'm thinking Prussian blue. This wouldn't be the colour I would normally choose. But you know what? Maybe my gut feeling is telling me it needs to be Prussian blue. So it's just... Not as much as last time, because I think I put far too much on the last time. That's a lovely colour. Prussian blue is such a beautiful blue. I'm going to take this template, I think, I can't remember, is that Polynesian something? And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to pull up pieces of this. Now you're going to find that it only picks up where you put pressure down because obviously um, the paint needs to come through the level of the stencil. That's nice. Now bring a little bit more onto this one. This definitely needs a bit here. These two I might leave as they are. This one, we'll take a look at them as we've been doing as we go along. I think this could use a little bit more down by there. Just a touch of it. This can come off. Again, this would print really lovely if I laid it down on something. But I'm not going to now. There's a whole load of something on there and I'm wondering I've got my box of postcards here, the ones that need a little help maybe, and just come in and take some of that away. Why wouldn't I? I mean, I'm not going to waste the paint, so I think I saw a pale blue one in here somewhere. This one will do. Oh, must have been writing something on the back of that. So again, this is just the way that I work. Oh, that's a lot more punchy now, loving that. Let's see if I've got something, one more that I can just pop something onto. I always have boxes, that's, that's fabulous. Um, I always have boxes of um, artist trading cards or um, half finished postcards hanging around because I like the fact that like in this instance, I've reached over, grabbed them because they're within arm's reach. And I've just been able to utilise that paint and not waste it. Let's just take this bit off here. We'll add something nice to my bit of tissue. Now I have absolutely no idea what the time is at this point, guys. I can't even see my screen. But I've got a feeling we must be coming up on an hour at any point now. So, right. Um, I do want to clean that off, actually. So right, I need to think now. Um, these are my detail ones that I'm going to be using, and it's a case of what do I want to do with them. Right, these two, I really do think I'd like to use this on, and I'm thinking I'd like to do it with some copper or some bronze. There you go. Is it copper? Is it bronze? It's copper. I was... Some brands call it copper. Some brands call it bronze. And to me, they all look the same. So... I very often get the names wrong on this one. So I'm going to put this down. I'm 
going to put this over the top and then I'm going to purposely come in and just lift sections of it pressing down quite firmly because I want it to catch it and lift it up and I don't mind using the bits that are on the bottom just to give it a bit more character see it's, it's subtle it's in there I like that so much I might add it to this one as well but what I do is I'll lift this off because all of the detail is there and pick it up on that one that was a good move right now do I want to use that for anything else maybe on some of these postcards just another layer of something something on them Many of you have asked me whether I'll make a tutorial on doing postcards and I've often said to you guys this the hard thing is that I don't really do end to end when it comes to postcards and artist trading cards and this is why I will grab stuff as I'm using it and just stick another layer on and I'll just keep doing that all the way along and that's that's how my designs for postcards and ATCs develop. I don't purposely do them. Okay, right, where are we up to? So I like that one. I think I'm gonna call that finished and put it to one side. Where can I put it? Let's put it down there. This one I think is finished and needs to go to one side. This one I think is finished and needs to go to one side. Now, I've got five left and as I said, I only need two. So I've got a nice selection of things to take out. Um, I want to come in now and add maybe a bit of this. And what's the colour I want to use? Tempted to go back to white. Don't know what it is about me and white today. I mean, it's not like the tags are dark. They're, they're looking lovely. So, so I might use a bit of white chalk paint um, because that will also give it a bit of a matte texture, which I'm kind of liking that view. So let's spray this out. Now again, matte, uh, chalk paints for me dry quite quickly. So it's a case of get a move on Griffiths and stop gossiping. I'm going to put the mask down with the edge showing because I may want to come in and capture that edge as a piece of interest. Right, okay, just for an example, this one here. If I come in here and press this down, that then gives me all of that edge there. I hope you're finding this interesting. I mean, I thought I'd turn the camera on because why not turn the camera on? Also, it gives me the chance to share with Tammy how her tags were made in the first place, which I don't know, maybe Tammy will find that interesting. Right, I'm just gonna come in with a couple of these now just to use up the remainder on this plate. See, just a little bits of interest, guys. Let's take that out of there. And I come in and pick up some of that on the other cards. So that's enough of that, I think. Actually, this one probably needs a little bit more down that side. Okay, that needs a bit of a clean off. So We've got to, I think this one is done. There, there's, that one just feels right at the moment. <clears throat> this one needs something on it. I think that needs something on it. I feel these two might be done as well. Not sure actually. Let's put those two by, because I know what I want to do on those. I've already in my mind known, but these two need a something. Let's go all the way back to the, I think it's called Dragonfly Wing Stained Glass. I think that's what that one's called. 
I'm feeling these need a kick of something. Actually, where's that colour? Okay, this is a new colour for me. Um, iridescent blue-green. Doesn't look like the colour you'd normally put on there, but you know what? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. We're going to go with this. I love this colour. I've used it a little bit myself, but not on screen. And it's it's a great colour. It's just, it's got a punch to it. Let's put it that way. I don't want it so much, though, that it overrules the roost. Right, I didn't use this side before, so let's use that side now. Just to give myself some interesting shapes. There you go. There you go. It was just a little bit. I don't know why I thought it needed something, but it did. There's that there. So I'm unsure about these at the moment. Those may get changed. Um, let's pull in maybe another postcard or two because I've got plenty of stuff on there. This one could do with something. That's given that a little bit of interest. Come on, out you come. Okay, I like this one and it's already got the colour in it. I just need to make sure that I press it down firm enough to get it out of the apertures. There you go. So, right, I'm going to go back to black <coughs> because I want to work with these two and this stencil. Stencil? It is a stencil, right. I'm unsure about these, they're looking a bit busy, but if there's enough of this left over, there may end up some on there. Right. I never know whether there's an up or down. That feels right. So if I turn it this way when I stamp, right, okay. Okay, I'm back to Mars Black. Oh, I just thought of a title for this video. It'll be Tags for Tammy. How about that, Tammy? I haven't thought of a title, but that just seems perfect. So I'm going to put that one down there. Now, I'm going to come in and try and pull up just the edge of this one. I'm being relatively gentle because I don't want things to move around. But that's what I was looking for, something there. Now, in this one, I want the middle bit done. So I'm going to come in, line the middle up, and press my finger in the middle. Now, if the side pieces come up, I don't mind. That, that was luck. Cannot say that was anything other than luck. I think I just want a little bit more on that one. Okay, that I think is done, with the exception of that bit across the top. Okay, now looking at these, I can put some of that on here. So I've now got it free. It's going to be interesting to hear Tammy tell me which one she thought were her favourite. So I've got stuff on here and I don't mind bringing in a couple of the others just to use it as a clean up because see that just pulls it all the way through. This is fabulous but that could do with a little bit of something down there. black is drying on me. That's not a surprise. Oh, it seems to be that I've used the same stencil on every one of them as a finishing touch. That wasn't my intent, but there you go. Let's give this a bit of a brayer. Now my postcards do get rebacked afterwards, so I'm not overly bothered. That's lovely. I'm not overly bothered. I think I'm going to leave that because I'm going to make everything far too dark if I'm too careful. Actually, it seems I've already done that on that one. That's just... That's interesting. You never know what it's going to turn out like. All right, let's just lift this off and clean it. And then we'll take a look. And I'm not going to tell you which two I sent to Tammy. Because that's a surprise for Tammy. 
and you never know Tammy you may end up with more than two right you don't need to see me doing that let's take that out of the way let's take that off a bit of a clean up here okay so let's look at what we created tag wise now these tags I will be backing them because I think they need a back for more substantial tagness and I want to punch a hole in the top and maybe no, I won't put a ribbon or anything on because that will bulk them up in the mail. But this is what we came up with. And you saw them created here. Loving that. Hopefully, Tammy, you love these because I think they're rather special. I love that one. That was really, really nice. Again, very busy. But you know what? Sometimes busy is just as good as simple. I mean, I don't know what Tammy's taste is. I only know what my taste is. Okay, so I think that's where we're at. So thank you for joining me here, guys. Um, Tammy, I hope you love the ones I send you. Um, you never know what you're going to get because I'm not going to tell you. Okay. Hi, guys. Just jumping in. I've just split the video so I can drop this bit in because I forgot to do something. Before I say goodbye, I should have said, um, I've got a discount code for you. So if you go to PM Artist Studio, that's www.pmartiststudio.com, go there. If you do any purchasing, I believe it's over $30, and this code will last to the end of December 2022. If you type this code in exactly as you see it, when you get to check out if it says enter promotional code or code or something, this will get you a further 10% off. So make sure you use it because you're shipping internationally. That 10% really does help. Okay, take care guys. And now back to the video where basically I'm going to say goodbye. Okay, where have I put my sign? Okay, it's time for me to say goodbye. So this is Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time, thanks for joining me. Send you love, Tammy. And I'll send the tags out as soon as I get to the post office. Bye-bye now.